I got a text the other night. Big project tomorrow from my boss. I'm like, I'm like number one, I'm, I'm with my family. You know, we're on the couch watching cartoons. And I'm like, big, big what? Yeah, I, I don't even, even, I don't think my job really even understands at this point how tuned out I am. Like, the last thing I think of, I'm not one of these guys that brings the job home. You understand? Even though I'm bringing it home right now. As a matter of fact. <sighs> I, I, I don't care if the place gets hit with a nuclear bomb. Okay? Anyway. I get, I get a, t I'm on a couch. I'm like feet up in the air. I'm watching TikTok videos. My, my son's watching cartoons. My wife's doing God knows what, counting macros on a phone or something mindless. And I get a text, big project tomorrow. So I'm like, uh, oh, all right. Uh, what should I do? Should I do the sick call now? Anyhow, number one, why are you texting me? I, I got to wake up. It's it's almost nine o'clock at night. I got to wake up at one o'clock. That's right. I wake up at one o'clock. So I get get to my job at three o'clock in the morning. Like There's a whole set of meditation. I got to make breakfast. This type of thing. I got I got to go into like, uh, I don't know, like a, like the, a Dalai Lama type of Zen meditation. To prepare myself for the mental abuse. <sighs> I got this for you right now. Then I, I, I walk through the door of my job. You got to understand something. This is what people don't understand. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. I've done this walk to the punch clock for 25 years. Do you understand? There, there might as well be a rut in the concrete where I've walked to the punch clock. And every time I walk up there, I said, oh, my God, I can't believe that I've been doing this for 25 years. This is this is mentally demoralizing. Do you understand that? I was I was reading something that. Ah! Anyhow, I come through the door and already my manager had like a. Uh, a monster and two Red Bulls. <laughs> He's vibrating. Okay, I like you could see like sweat. I'm, it's three o'clock in the morning. And my eyes are barely open. <laughs> Big project today. Get your tools ready. And I'm like, oh. I'm like, how about a good morning, right? Oh, how about hi? How are you? Good morning. How about this type of thing? So, I head down to the punch clock and I get the news that my partner called in sick. Like, you know what? This is terrific. We got help for you. Now, I'm going to do a big steel move, right? Yeah, we're going to rearrange the steel. We're going to rearrange the steel in the warehouse like we do every other day. Yes. We, do, we, we want to make sure that, you, you, you know, your spine is the consistency of graham crackers with arthritis. Before you're 50 years old. So who's going to help me? Uh, so I'm, I'm, like, I'm sitting there, I'm like, all right, who's my help going to be? Oh, you're going to get so-and-so. He's, he's the guy that fucking pushes carts in the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to help you with this deal today. Uh, and uh, I'm like, oh, God. Guys, you understand something right now? I got news for you. When I do steel with my partner, we're like a well-oiled machine. Do you understand? It's like he swings the steel, I duck, it goes over my head, I pick it up, we click, click, and the, the, it, it, you have no idea. We have a system. Do you understand? This guy's picking up the steel. He's twisting the steel in my hand. He's breaking my wrists. This type of thing. He's swinging hammers everywhere. It's like, I'm going to die today. 
<sighs> Anyhow, I sit there and I, I'm taking these, I got to take the clips out of the steel. I, I left my screwdriver in the back of the building. Do you understand? It's like, I got to walk, I, I got to run a marathon now just to go, go get my tool. I said, ah, fuck. He's like, what's the matter? I said, I left my screwdriver in the back. He goes, oh, I, I got a screwdriver in my locker. And, and, and I'm like, oh, yeah? I'm like, yeah, okay, get it. So I'm sitting there. He comes waddling back. And he hands me. I don't even know what he handed me, to be honest with you. It was like pink, number one. I don't I, What is it with tools now? It was like bright pink. He hands it to me. It's like, eh, it's a good, good screw, screwdriver. It's got a flashlight. I said, number one, I take a one look at it. The screwdriver, anytime you hand me a tool with a flashlight in it, you can get it the fuck away from me. I'm like, what? what, what where's the embroidery of Mickey Mouse on the side? It's got a flashlight. I'm looking at this thing. I pull, I'm like, what is this tab? I pull it, there's a tape measure inside of it. And it's got a level on it. I threw it on the floor. This is this is how I'm getting in my life. With no respect for this gentleman over here, I threw it on the floor. And I started walking away to go get my tool. I, I'm going to run the marathon now. I started walking around. He said, he goes, what's the problem? What's the problem? I said, go use that flashlight to find your dignity. Just like that. I don't know. And then the black guy that's working across the aisle, he goes, oh, damn, you backed up. And I'm like, what? He's like, he's like, you backed up, bro. And I'm like, I'm, I'm looking at him like, what does that even mean? He's like, you need to fuck, man. And I'm like, oh, God. You see, you need, you need some, he goes, you need some pussy. I was like, I was like, uh, and then I come back with like, yeah, yeah, I get that. I, I was so, fr I'm so frustrated. I'm flabbergasted at this point. I, I answer, I answer this back. Like this needs an answer back. I said, don't worry. I get plenty of that. And then my face goes cherry red, which is basically like a, a huge sign to the world that I'm lying. Yeah. Thanks, chief. Thank you for giving me this pale skin. That, I want to be a black guy. I want to be a black guy so I can lie. Every time I tell a lie, my face turns cherry red. I'm the worst liar in, on planet Earth. It's like all the blood rushes to my face. Anytime I get embarrassed, ring, cherry red. Look, he's a liar. He's a liar, son of a bitch, that guy. Look at his face. It's cherry red. Can't hide. So I say that and my face turns into, I don't know, like a glow stick in the tunnel. And then and all the way back to the toolbox, I'm thinking to myself, maybe I need to, I, I need to get laid? Is that what it is? It's been a while. Maybe I need to get laid. I also heard while, while I was walking away, what's his problem? I'm like, listen, guy, this is the same guy I got news for you right now. This is this 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 guy's got the IQ of uh I don't know uh like a, a tube of toothpaste. He he's kind of like he's he's listen slow. I, I work with a lot of slow people, you know, that make the same money I do, by the way. Which is always great, great morale booster. I remember I walked into the break room one day, just goofing around. Like, you know what? I'm getting stressed out of here. This is my new thing. I, I got news for you right now. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I had to confirm. Uh, Ryan sent me these candy cigarettes. This is my new thing. I, I smoke them at work. Yeah. 
when I get stressed out. I put them, I, I just go, I come out of the building. When, when I leave the villa, I, I take out my cigarettes like this and I, I put one in my mouth. And people say to me, what is that? And I go like this. I'm having a smoke, why? What's the issue? And I swear to God, I, it must be psychosomatic. I get the same relaxing feeling. I, I swear to God. I wish I could sit here and lie to you. I'm walking back to my car. I'm like, oh my God. <sighs> this is great. I, I, I know. I know. I went up to my wife the other day. I pulled out the cigarettes. She's washing the dishes. I said, oh man. I said, I, I just can't take it anymore. I pull out a cigarette. And she looks at me and she's like, are you serious? Are you serious? And I go up to her and I'm like, hey baby. And I look her up and down and I grab her by the ass and I go, you gonna give me that little pussy tonight? <laughs> And she's completely disgusted with me. I would be too. I would be too. Anyhow, I go into the break room and I see this guy and I'm like, uh, let's say his name is Joe. Because it is. I said, hey, Joe, I, I, does it, we have a strip club by us called Stonehenge. I've probably told this story a million times, but I love telling it. So I really don't give a fuck. We have a strip club around me called Stonehenge, okay? Well, it's not its not open anymore, but uh, it used to be. Anyhow, they had those tables that let wrestlers used to throw each other through. That's what the girls would dance on, just to give you an idea. And they'd serve you beer in a plastic cup, like like one of those clear cups, not even like a big red cup, the little cup that you, that you, you brush your teeth with, this type of thing. Oh, yeah. And you go up there, the girls are dancing. It's like, you know, uh, the one girl's got like fentanyl falling out of a brassiere. Do they dance with a brassiere on? I guess not. That's right. Okay. Anyhow, these type of girls, you understand? So I walk into the break room. I say, hey, Joe, I saw you at Stonehenge last night. He's like, what? He's like, what are you talking about? I wasn't at Stonehenge. This type of thing. I'm like, oh yeah. And I just walk out of the room. Then later on, he comes up behind me and he like leans into my ear. He's like, hey, I didn't see you there last night. <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, cause I wasn't. No, I'm not. What were you doing at Stonehenge anyhow, huh? Letting one of those filthy fucking hooers sit on your face? <laughs> I don't know, guys. Coffee and cigarettes. I mean, what more do you want in life? I gotta stay out of break rooms. The other day we had a, we had this young guy in there telling everybody about his crock pot. I got I I got a little scrap of information for you right now. You know why it's called a crock pot? Cause it's a, it's a fucking crock. Yeah. I look, I look, I throw meat in there and then I dump in uh, cube tomatoes and uh, a little salt and I, and it was a delicious meal. I have news for you right now. You, I've used the crock pot before. Okay. Number one, you gotta cook everything before you put it in right there. Game over. I'm out. And then you let this thing stew all day long and you open it up and it always looks like somebody took a human shit into the pot. Do you understand this type of thing? I've never seen an appetizing meal come out of a crock pot. If a crock pot was so great, don't you think everybody would be using one? The crock pot is, is it's, it's a long standing American tradition. You use it one time and then you put it in that cabinet from hell with the rest of appliances that you don't use, like the, uh, like the pasta maker. 
Yes, and the bread maker. That's right. And the cotton candy machine. You ever see this appliance drawer? Put it right next to your fucking air fryer while you're at it. If I'm going to hear another dumb broad talk about an air fryer. This is what I got to deal with when I go to work. That's why I... I what, you wonder, you wonder to yourself, you know, that guy, you know, up on a, a a stool, putting a noose around his neck. You say, well, he must be out of his mind, right? Yeah, well, you know what? Sit around and, t and listen to two dumb broads talk about an air fryer for about an hour. A noose looks pretty damn good. Oh my god. Crock pots. I hear people talk about a crock pot. And then I got a guy come up to me the other day. Where's your green shirt? I was like, huh? It's St. Patrick's Day. I was like, wh how, what? Yeah, okay, what? what? What do you plant the tree on Arbor Day? I wish St. Patrick's Day, listen, St. Patrick's Day was cute when I was like, I don't know, 18. Remember we'd all load on the train? Like, st uh, hey, I'm drinking a Heineken at eight in the morning. Look at me. It's St. Patrick's Day, a, l a license to be a uh, uh, alcoholic. Yeah. And then we go down to the St. Patrick's Day parade. Uh, most boring parade on planet Earth, by the way. Yeah. The, the, the thing I th thought was fascinating about St. Patrick's Day parade was they have the police and the fire department go by. I had no idea how many uh, New York City cops there were. I couldn't believe it. And I'm like, these guys aren't even on duty. It was just like row after row after row after row of cops. I said, Jesus Christ. And firefighters. I said, Brr. No shortage of cops around here. This was back in the Giuliani days, too, when, you know, cops could crack your head open. Remember that? Oh, my God. Let me tell you something about Rudy Giuliani. He cleaned up New York City. You can say what you want. You couldn't come to New York City without somebody, like, jerking off on your shoulder on the subway. You understand? Oh, yeah. You have no idea what the city used to be like. It was an animal house. You had guys, three-card Monty, that type of thing, where they set up the suitcase. They'd say, hey, I'm, I'm opening my suitcase. Hold on. Uh, that's my other favorite hobby is farting on my partner at work. Yeah. Spanish guy. I tell him, I fought on him, and then he goes, ah, he goes, ah, you, you, stu you son of a bitch. And, and then I go like this, I go, you know something? I said, deep down inside, you love the smell of my farts. I say like that to him, and he goes, ah, go fuck yourself. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the only joy in my day. Do you understand? I said... I say, no, 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 like this. You got to tie it like this. And I go, I bend over right in front of him. <laughs> yeah, and I give him one of those 45-year-old farts. You know, those disgusting farts that sound like, uh, I don't know. It's like, uh, what does this guy got, bowel cancer when they come out? Through, uh, it's, it's farts through ash cheeks that just have given up at this point. Yeah, and I plant them right on him. Oh, my God. Huh? What, what were we talking about? I forgot. Oh, St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, I... Who gives a fuck? Who gives, like, a really big, big fuck? I, yeah, oh, yeah, Giuliani. Yeah. Remember, he Giuliani used to load all the homeless people on a bus and send them to Jersey. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> it's a great idea. You know? I don't know. And then all of a sudden, New York City turned into like Disneyland. You could actually walk around in there, you know? 
without somebody stabbing you to death. No, but that's no good. You know, you can't have that these days. You can't have police that do their job these days. No, no. So, you know, New York City's the fucking shithole dump that it used to be in the 70s now. Yeah, that's nice. I'll, I'll, he I'll head into the city. Yeah, I'll, I'm hopping on the train now. Sounds great. Anyhow, what are we talking about here? I don't know. All I know is that this woman brought a fucking banging. And I mean, a bang St. Patrick's Day, she brought in a pistachio bunt cake. I was like, what is this? She's like, it's a pistachio bunt cake. She goes, and I made the buttercream icing myself. It's delicious. I'm like, I'll be the judge. She's like, you want a piece? I'm like, yeah. Well, let me tell you something right now. I ate this piece of cake and I, all I could think about is how I could go back and get another piece of cake without looking like a complete, like, schnurra. I'm like, I, to me, this was like, I gotta pull off the Pink Panther heist! All I can think about, I gotta get another piece of this cake. I'm like, I don't know, maybe I'll start a fire in the corner of the building, everybody will run out, I'll get another piece of cake. What's it gonna be? I'll drop a pallet from the top steel. Everybody, because everybody's gotta come running over when there's an accident. Oh yeah, I remember when I used to drive the forklift. You know, you take a wild turn, the whole ki the, the whole pallet of Coca-Cola goes over, crash onto the floor. Yeah, and then and everybody's got to come running over. What happened? Oh, uh, well, you know, uh, what does it look like fucking happened? You moron! This is what you got to deal with. Now you got to clean this shit up and you got idiots coming around here. I love it now. Now people come out with their cell phone on, with the camera rolling. You drop that soda? Yeah, what is this? News 12? I, I, and I love it. As soon as you drop something on the forklift, they're running that. You gotta take a drug test. They're already trying to can you. You you know how miraculous it is to drive a forklift for like, I don't know, 20 years of your life and not have an accident? It's like, this stuff is bound to happen. It has to happen by law. And as soon as you do, you make a mistake, they, they're trying to can you. Yeah, you gotta take a drug test. Yeah, well guess what? Hey, cocksucker, if I pass the drug test, then what? I can get a bonus. That, that, this doesn't make sense. So, I make a mistake, you send me for a drug test, the, the outcome of the drug test could be my termination. So if I pass the drug test, then what? Then what do I get? I want extra vacation time! <sighs> I've taken drug tests before. And do, 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 do I gotta be honest with you? I feel like a complete loser that they come back negative. I'm like, I'm not even having any fun with my life. It's like, I'm driving a forklift, and I'm not even having any fun in my life. It's like I watched this, this documentary of people in New York City, Hell's Kitchen. There's a documentary called uh, First Call. I'm watching it on YouTube. I'm fascinated by it. It's a bar that opens up at like 7 o'clock in the morning. And they go in there, and they it's basically a chock full of alcoholics. You know, people that come in early in the morning to start drinking. And I said to myself, I said, um, you know, at first, you know, you're very judgmental. You're like, what an alcoholic drinking at seven in the morning. Who? And you, you, you're really like, you, you're passing judgment on these people, right? And there's all walks of life. You know, there's gay people in there, there's black guys, Irish guys, like all, all, all types of people. They're going in there for a morning drink. Some of them are drinking before they go to work. Just to get the day kicked off, I'm like, huh, what a novel idea. And the more I think about it, the, 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 the director did something really, really interesting. He's filming these people, you know, at 8 o'clock in the morning, getting fucking hammered. And they're all laughing, you know, they're, they're having a joke with each other, they're all interacting. They're having a great time. This is, what, this is what happens when you go to a bar. You start to have a great time, believe it or not. 
And then they flash to commuters, like getting on a train and whatnot, and you see everybody like this. You got, you got a guy with his briefcase. He's got that fucking hang dog look on his face like he just wants to jump in front of the train. And everybody's in line, like at the fucking turnstile for the subway. And they're like loading on, and you see everybody's a fucking miserab. And you say to yourself, Jesus Christ, maybe the people in the bar got it figured out. I said, who's to say they don't have it right? They're in, they're in that bar getting loaded, watching the wheels go round and round. I said, you know something? I'm fucking in. I'm in. Who wants to do a little AM drinking? Are you with me? So anyway. Uh, this, I go back and nobody's by the desk. I said, oh my God, here's my chance. And I start cutting another piece of that pistachio cake. And then the woman, the woman that baked the cake comes around the corner and she sees me and I have, I didn't know how to hide it. I was like, oh, and I had this look of like, uh, I don't know, terror on my face. Like I, I got caught red handed. I got caught. And to be honest with you, I, I'm not the guy that double dips on food that comes to work. Like, you know, some people bring in, br will bring in like cookies and stuff like that and put them in the break room. And then there's always the guy that takes like the, the, the handful like this. <laughs> he comes in with a snow shovel. <laughs> and then he'll open up his locker and put it in his locker for later. They're like, oh, oh scum of the earth is here. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Yeah. Oh, there's always somebody that comes in with the paper towels. They, uh, bagels come in. Say somebody brings in bagels. Oh, this is, they, they, they're buttering one bagel, they wrap it up in a paper towel, and then they're buttering another one, and then they're buttering, and you're like, you're like, how, what? And you're looking at them, and they're like, oh, just, just for other employees out on the floor, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Next thing you know, they're, uh, they're, br they're bringing home breakfast for their family. Anyhow. I get caught sli slicing another p piece of cake. And and for my, for my moral compass, this is a big no-no. So I, I was like, <gasps> but she, she says to me, she goes, you like the cake, don't you? I said, I really like the cake. I really like the cakey. She's like, go ahead, have another piece. I was like, thank you. Thank you. And the slice I was cutting was enormous, okay? It was enormous. Yes, this was Grand Theft Auto. You understand? This was Grand Larceny when it comes to, like, cake. Anyhow. So I'm eating a slice of cake, and one of the guys comes around, one of, one of the drivers comes around, and I'm like, oh, my God, the cake's fantastic. Did you have a piece? He's like, no, bro. He's like, I'm cutting carbs. I'm, uh, I'm on zero sugar, I'm cutting carbs. And I was like, what? He goes, uh, uh, he goes I'm, I'm, I cut out all my carbs. I said, dude, what are you, a fucking broad? He's like, oh man, come on. He's like, I gotta get it down. I said, what, 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 how, what get it down? This guy, you, you, you gotta see this guy, he's a fucking disaster. I, fe I felt like saying to him, you're a fucking disaster. Eat the cake. Eat the cake. You're half dead. You're half dead. And then, and then, uh, by the way, I came back for another piece of cake. I ain't gonna lie to you. I came back for another one, but everybody was around. So I go and I look at the cake, and it's like there's like one more piece there. I'm like, I can't take it. And then there's a girl sitting on the, by the computer there, and I'm like, hey, did you try the cake? She's like, oh, no, I can't have it. I said, what are you talking about? She goes, oh, I, I cut out all sugar, d desserts and sugar for Lent. I'm like, Lent? She goes, yeah, 40 days. I had no, no, uh, no sugar. I said, so what is everybody nuts around here? The way I see it, I might not have 40 days to live. Anyway, 
I'd be lying if I, I told you I wasn't tracking that last piece of cake for the rest of the day. Somebody ate it. And I said, you know what? I'm fucking out of here. Guys, what? Uh, uh, Callahan here? <sighs> Reporting for duty. Hey, let's do a novel thing and turn it off before we plug it in today, huh? Maybe we can fool the world. Like that was scanning for crimes. I'm watching the TV the other day. Big mistake, by the way. Just just shut your TV off. At this point, I feel like taking my TV like poltergeist and throwing it right out the back door. You understand? I'm watching the TV, a commercial comes on to celebrate Women's History Month. I'm like, what? What? Woman's History Month? What? What's going on here? I got news. For, I got a little piece of information right now. I'm going to have Man's History Month, okay? And I, I, and 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 fuck everybody that tries to tell me otherwise. What we're doing on the show? We're going to have Man's History Month. What? What month? July. July Fourth of July. There's no manly a holiday. It's gonna be Man's History Month. Yeah. Woman's History Month. I was like, what? What? What, what are we gonna do? What What Woman's History Month? The way you wanna celebrate the dumb broad that killed herself with radiation? Huh? Is that the way you wanna celebrate? Come on. What was her, what was the, what was her asshole name? Madam something? Madam melt my face off with radiation. What a hero. What a hero. It's one of the, she should go down as one of the great dunces of all time. Who else you got? How about, how about, uh, great women of all time? Let me try to think of one. I mean, uh, hmm. how about Dolly Parton? Huh? Who made the rack famous? You don't you didn't even know that? Dolly Parton made the rack of tits famous. Nobody had a rack of tits before Dolly Parton, you understand? This was like she I was she like the first one to get breast implants? I was said so, so, Dolly Parton was one of those broads that looks great from like 80 feet away. And then you get close up and you're like, ew, boy oh boy. This is like a wreck. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you see the staples in the neck over here, holding the face up, this type of thing, the eyeliner. She put on the eyeliner with a Sharpie. That's what we're dealing with. Oh, what, are, what other, Women's History Month, what, are, what other broads do we got? You know, I don't know. The, all the, all the, we could celebrate all the dumb broads burning their bras back in the day. Yeah, oh, you, you, you're the winner. You're the grand prize winner of a full-time job. <laughs> we burning our bras. We want to work like men. There you go, dummy. Now you got it. Now, when the refrigerator comes to my front door, you're going to help me carry it in the house. Yeah, equal rights. Equal rights. That's right. That's right. My God, if I was a woman I could, and I could go back and I could grab the dumb bitch, the first dumb bitch that started burning a bra, oh my God, I'd wrap the bra around the neck and choke her to death. I'd be like, this stops right here. I want to go back on the couch and watch TV. And this idiot's over here burning bras? Are you kidding me? Now I got to get a job? You you dumb bitch. Let's sell him. Uh, 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 you know what, guys? There goes Rita. That what Woman's History Month. We celebrate Rita.
Is this heater even working? Guys, what, what we're gonna do today, we're gonna celebrate, I don't know, we're gonna talk about games that put a smile on my face. Okay, games that aren't necessarily good, but when I play them, I get happy. And I haven't played these games since I've actually played them on the actual consoles. So it's been a while. But these games make me happy. And I was thinking about this this morning. And I said, that, what games just make me happy when I put them on? Well, let's, let's find out. Picture, picture time. What do you call it? Games that make me happy, happy, happy. And there's flowers in the hair. Flowers everywhere. I love the flower girl. Did zip bang boom? Did it zip bang crash? I love that song. Why can't we go back to that time? I listen to that t that song, Flower Girl, and I think of the movie Night of the Living Dead. And I just want to go back to the sixties, please. When smoking cigarettes was good for your health, you understand? Oh my God. I'm listening to Brian Wilson from the from the Beach Boys talk about uh, the shuffle beat, you know, like in Good Vibration. And she's picking up good vibrations. The, the shuffle beat, you understand? You know where he got it? From Sebastian Bach, the piano player. Didn't Bach play the piano player, or was he? What, did he play piano? Or was he a composer? But he heard a shuffle beat. He said, that's where the shuffle beat came from. Bach. Is anybody still awake out there? All right, all right. You know what? Where's the controller? <clears throat> well, we probably threw this in until we turn 10. Charging atomic batteries. Kill lights of attrition. And move you guys into prime time position. Okay. There we go. I think the first one we're going to talk about is on the Sega Genesis, and that was Benimi Run. Now, Benimi Run was it the greatest game of all time? No. But what was great about Benimi Run is you could drive a boat, and at that time to have almost like a. a not a 3D, it was kind of like a 3D. It was an interesting perspective of driving a boat. And it was almost open world because you could basically drive the boat wherever you wanted to drive it. Oh my god, it was so much fun. And then the rest of the game was horrible. But it makes me happy. Happy! Happy! Here we go. Mm-hmm. B. Oh, we don't have far to go. Vinimi Run. Here we go. 1990. And this is probably the last time that I did play the game. <clears throat> oh. I mean, if nothing else, we get some sensational Sega Genesis music, right? Yeah. Oh, New Vision Entertainment. This had to be a Western game. Oh, yeah, look at this guy. Oof, boy. Look at that lipstick, huh? Here we go. Look, look at this. We hop on a boat. Okay, we can shoot. Look at this. And I remember the boat goes up, goes up on plane almost. Look at this. Let's crash into one of these guys, huh? Come here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on, let's get serious. We got to get to the island. You rammed the sailboat. Oh, really? Thank you, Sherlock. 
Here we go. Look, at, I love how this guy's carrying a bazooka. Disaster, they outran you. Report back to headquarters. All right. All right, let's do this the right way. What, what are we driving in, a cigarette boat? Remember, that was the big thing in the 80s. Everybody, a, a cigarette boat. Okay, here we go. There they go, black boat, here we go. This, whoa, <laughs> is he fucking up those sailboats? Does this thing go any faster? Oh, here we go. Oh, listen to that. Hold on a second here. Let's get in the mood, the groove here. Whoa. There he is. Whoa. Watch the buoy. Whoa, here we go. So it's almost like a Chase HQ. Hold on a second, I got neighbors for Christ's sake. There we are, right? That's us, the enormous boat on the map. All right, here we go. Oh. Sandbar. Whoa. All right, we're gonna hit him with the bazooka. Jesus Christ. Let me guess, we rammed the sailboat. All right, here we go. We got him. Out of here, bitch! You picked up the henchmen and captured their weapons. Okay, great. What do we do now? Oh yeah, we head to the island. Here we go. So the only thing that prevents us from really fucking off, see, we could do anything we want. Here, oh. There you go. Look, look at this bazooka, by the way. Oh, shit. Out of here, bitch. Out of here, bitch. Oh, come on. So, look, look, wouldn't we say it's, it's a lot like um, road blasters? All right, let's get to the island here. Here we are. Oh. Oh, <laughs> I guess we're not supposed to do that. Oh boy. All right, here we go. Are we supposed to blow up that tower? No, no, no. Let's go around. You're out of here. It's a very controllable game. Got great controls. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Where's the island? Where do we pull in? Oh, no. No, 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 no. I just want to get to the island. Hold on a second. All right, you know what? What are we going to play this all day? So, you know, but me run. It makes me happy. It does. Okay, let's go. Let's go to the Atari Lynx. That's right. Uh, B. And it was the first game that I bought when I bought my Atari Lynx. And uh, what a wonderful purchase. What a wonderful game. And that is, now we can show you this game in all of its glory, right? Yes, very exciting. Warbirds. Do, 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 to, I cannot begin to tell you how ahead of its time this game was. Flight Simulator, Flight arcade but... Oh, yeah. Mode 7 scaling. Atari Lynx doing it big time! Look at this! Absolute 1990 again. How appropriate. 
Okay. Okay. Unlimited ammo, unlimited damage, no. Critical damage. Critical damage. No collisions. Ah. Uh, we're gonna put, just for the sake of watching, one life, give me two lives. How about three? How about unlimited? Dueling start, flight simulator, arcade action. Flight simulator. Okay. Here we go. Let's do the milk run just to start. Look at this. Look at the machine gun bullets. Here we go. There's our opponent. We start out facing each other. Look at this. Oh boy. Okay, here's how we go. We dive. And we come back around. Loop de loop. Spin. And he's right there. Oh yeah. Look, I can look. Oh, I shut the engine. <laughs> what did I start it with? A stick of dynamite? Here we go. There he is. Oh boy. Bring it around. Oh, we're on his tail. We're on his tail. Oh, we got him dead to rights. Yes. Oh, look at the smoke. Look at the smoke. Look at the smoke. We got him. Oh, he's going down. Let's follow him. Follow him down. Out of here, bitch. Come on, kill the engine. Look at that. Now you could land your plane and get re-weaponized and fill up your weapons. Like it's just a great game. When you get into a, do let's get into a major dog fight here. All right, all right. I know. Look at how handsome. Oh wait, no, 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 no. Okay, double teamed. Pair of aces, the swarm. Okay, this is where all hell breaks loose. Here we go. Let's get this. Let's get the full effect. Machine guns blazing. Here we go. Ready? Here he comes. Look at the clouds, guys. A lot of the capacitors are popping. All right. Good dive. We're diving down. Get altitude. Turn around. Oh. It's a swarm, guys. There's our refueling depot down there. Oh, come up, come up, come up. Where are they? You can look over your wing. Hey. Oh, oh, that's us. That's us. That's us. Oh, there they are, the swarm. They're all the way up there. We have to gain altitude. It's very difficult to gain altitude. You got to get airspeed by diving. And then you got to go back up. Slowly, slowly, slowly. You don't want to stall. Oh, boy, they put you at a disadvantage. Listen to the engine struggle. Where are they? There they are, scum of the earth. Oh. Where are you? Where are you? Eat shit. Eat shit. Look, he's smoking. He's smoking. We gotta stay on their tail. That's it. Eat shit. Eat shit. We're losing altitude. Look at this. The emulation box can't even keep up with these graphics. Here we go. We're gonna cut him off at the pass. Where's this guy? This guy's damaged goods. We're going for him. All right, we got it. We got to build. Oh, oh, shit. I should have turned the collisions off. Jesus Christ. How about this? Let's do this. Let's crash. Ready?
You always got to do that in a flight simulator. Ah, Jesus Christ, yeah. There you go. What are you going to do? Guys, we're already an hour in here. I figured we just... We, uh, uh, that's a new segment in the show. Games that make me happy. That's all. Do you realize you just tuned into the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization? And you better believe that. With the 4K fights! We'll see you next time. All right, guys, just to let you know, our Patreon uh, page is kicking into full swing. We're going to put up another advice show this week. We have a weekly advice show. If you'd like to participate, email me to this email down below and uh, ask your advices. That's what I'm here for. I'm gonna, I could solve all your problems very quickly, very quickly. I know a little something. I know a little something here and there. Uh, um, no, but uh, we do this show and you come to me and we give you advices like this. Oh, you, the doctor tells me, hey buddy, you got stage four cancer. You know what I say? <laughs> well, guess what doc? It's time for stage four party. I mean, the disco ball comes down from the ceiling. I tell my wife all the time, listen guys, I don't care if you got gray snatch hairs. All right? It's something different. Not bad. Not bad, right? I know. I know it's a lot of fun. Guys, the Patreon channel is heating up. We're going to build up a wonderful library of advices, programs, and some uh, shows uh, sprinkled in there as well. So if you'd like to join, it's very simple. Like a dollar. That's it. You want to do a dollar? It supports the show, and I'm very grateful to the Patreons. Anyway, guys, we'll see you next time.